Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Please. I'm not ready for America today. I can't take another day of it under the terrorist in the White House. So here we are on the Savage Nation. Every day we wake up and the country devolves a little bit more because of the terrorism that is coming out of the White House, the terrorism against borders, the terrorism against our language, the terrorism against our culture. Can you imagine a president of the United States sending a congratulatory letter, email, tweet, to a man who cuts a schmendrick off. Well, I, I guess he really didn't do that. Everything's been changed. All definitions have changed. So we have a traitor in the White House who pretends he's a patriot. A man who has divided America like it's never been divided, who says one of his core principles is to never divide people. So a former athlete, age 65, decides he wants to live the rest of his life as a woman simply because he's a narcissistic egomaniac who belongs in a mental hospital. And the psychos at Vanity Fair put him on the cover, give him a 22-page layout to discuss his coming to grips with his feelings he's had about himself for years. And now that this uh, psychopath is acting on those feelings, changing his name to Caitlin, uh, they give him a photo shoot with him dressed in several gowns and other women's attire. All of a sudden, psychopathic tweets come in from all over the world from his family, some family, all sick in the head, and even the so-called president of the United States congratulates him on his courage in taking this brave step. That's a redefinition of the word courage, isn't it? Like redefining the word marriage. See where it's led to? Now we redefine the word courage. They changed the words courage and brave, just as the word marriage has been changed. And our society is taking these simple words and for the purpose of elevating some perceived slight of minority, changing the actual meaning of words. We all know that marriage is a union between a man and a woman for the pur purposes of having a family and building a civil society. Well, now it's been changed by certain radical Marxists to mean a union between people in love. Well, what does that mean? What's love mean? The consequences of this are yet to be seen as other unions will have to be recognized as marriage under this new definition. Now bravery and courage will have to be reevaluated. Remember when it took courage to see that your nation and family were under attack? and stepping up to defend them at the risk of your own life. That was courage. That was bravery. Remember when bravery was running into machine gun fire to rescue a buddy who'd been cut down in fire? Ask someone who stormed Omaha Beach on D-Day, or Guadalcanal, or Anzio, or the Chosin Reservoir in Korea, or, or survived the Quezon shelling in Vietnam, or, or troops still alive who were at Fallujah or Ramadi. Ask those guys what bravery and courage mean. Or if you don't want to go that far, ask a cop on the street who has to face the vermin every day, to take out another Muslim trying to behead him as just happened in Boston, or a fireman who has to run up a burning ladder to save lives. Ask them what it means to be brave, what to have courage. You know what those men would tell you? It was nothing. They would do it again if they were asked to do it. They're not looking for any special recognition at Vanity Fair or the, or the media. Ask them if this crazed athlete did was brave or courageous, or the act of a psychopath. You know what they tell you? They fought and died for his right to be a psychopath and exhibit himself. Now that's bravery and that's courage. Now let's have a little music. Let's go to the original one I picked, the Shirelles, because I really like that song almost better than the second one I picked. And we're gonna give out copies of Countdown to Mecca for Father's Day to all those lucky enough to get on the air. I have some positive notes for you, which is the young people applying for the Savage Scholarships and other stuff. ISIS bans pigeon breeding because seeing birds' genitals overhead offends Islam. This is how sick the country is. Wait, stop. I couldn't believe this story yesterday. ISIS, the Islamo-fascists, have banned pigeon breeding in the, in the territories they've conquered in Iraq and Syria because seeing birds flying overhead, seeing the genitals of birds flying overhead, offends Islam. This is Islam. Oh, here, speaking of Islam, I don't know if you caught this one. It was buried from the media immediately. There was a sex sting operation in Florida recently where they arrested 101 people. And guess who they, they took into the net? A Muslim leader. 
the Orlando leader of the Council of American Islamic Relations, <laughs> was arrested in a child sex thing. Wait, it gets even better. Ahmed Salim, a Muslim youth coordinator, was also one of the men arrested. Investigators said the man all went to a home in Claremont with the hope of having sex with a child. Now, here's the last punchline from Ahmed Salim of CARE. The car Salim traveled in had a license plate that said, quote, invest in children, according to investigators. Oh, by the way, Mr. Muslim Salim is also founder of the Salim Academy, an organization empowering Muslim youth globally. And he also served as the Orlando coordinator for CARE. A note posted at the Salim Academy website Tuesday night stated, closed. May God bless you, guide you, and illuminate the right path for you and keep you firm on it. Keep me in your prayers. So there's a community outreach leader interacting with teens in and around the Orlando area, pulled up uh, in a sex uh, scandal there, uh, trying to get in, uh, in with a kid. Sick, sick, sick. Anyone who actually does this should be executed as far as I'm concerned. And I'll tell you why, because if you do this to a child, that child is ruined for life. They're destroyed. You've stolen a life. You've killed them. It's homicide. So there's no punishment that's sufficient as far as I am concerned. I'm not asking you to chime in on this. There's, a, there's other news that I will get to you. Did you hear about the school that took children on a field trip to a sex shop? You didn't hear that one. Now, why would parents allow their children to go on such a field trip to a sex shop? Answer, because it was called the Gaia School. And the parents are all progressives. And they sent their children to this progressive school. And so the psychopathic teacher in this progressive school took their little children to a sex shop on a field trip. There's the liberal agenda as seen by the x-ray machine called a savage nation. Meanwhile, the terrorist in the White House says the United States is the most respected country in the world. By the way, I'm using that, that guardedly. If I call Obama a terrorist, what do you think I mean? Well, let's analyze it. For 21 years, I have spoken about and written about borders, language, and culture. And we all know what happens when you break the border of a nation. People flood in who you don't want in the nation. They include the genuine needy, you know, that's assuming we can take care of the needy, and the criminals and the perverts and the rapists and the terrorists. So if an enemy were to break our borders, we would say he's a terrorist, right? Now what if an enemy were to debase our language? What if an enemy were to destroy or decimate our culture? You'd say he's a terrorist, wouldn't you? Well, there it is. Go with the enemy. Obama says he's the greatest friend Israel's ever had. Tell that to the Israelis. The global threat of ISIS, it keeps growing. Illegal immigrants can shape elections. Now, I want to go back to this issue of the uh, Patriot Act for a minute, minute because this character, uh, McConnell, who may as well be a foreign agent as far as I'm concerned. Where's, where's McConnell? Here he is. Uh, Mitch McConnell. Remember Mitch McConnell, the gobbler who you thought was a conservative Republican? until you found out that he was in favor of a secretive deal with China to give away what's left of our industrial base. He now came out fuming that the Patriot Act was mildly modified the other night by the wonderful leadership we have. I want you to listen to the complaints of Mitch McConnell in Clip 12. Those who reveal the tactics, sources, and methods of our military and intelligence community give a playbook, a playbook to ISIL and to Al-Qaeda. As the Associated Press declared today, the end of Section 215 program is a, quote, this is the headline in the AP today, a resounding victory for Edward Snowden. It is also a resounding victory for those who currently plotted against our homeland. I think Snowden should run for Senate in, in the state of Kentucky. I think that Kentucky should offer Edward Snowden amnesty, uh, let him come back from Russia and run for the Senate seat occupied by this double-dealing gobbler out there. There's a lot of other news. I don't know if I'm going to get to it in order yet. I want to read the good stuff, what it means to be an American, so you have some hope that when you, when you finally go to your reward, the country's not going to be gone. I'm not one of those who think the country will be destroyed permanently, incidentally. And I keep bringing up the model I used in 1994. I was laughed at by a local newspaper. I remember when I started the radio, I said, America's dying because the leadership is decimating our borders, language, and culture. I was laughed at, even though I was a prophet. 
And now you got skirts out there copying everything I wrote over 21 years, making it into like an original. A skirt suddenly, a cross a leg job. I don't know, maybe I should become transgendered. Maybe my books would be co uh, covered on Fox News. Do you think that would work, Robert, if I became transgendered? Do you think that, that O'Reilly would have me on? Then they would have me on for Countdown to Mecca? They suddenly claim I was way ahead of the curve. But I don't think I'm going to have that happen, uh, at least not in this life. By the way, speaking of transgendered, I really don't know any woman who wants to be 65. Why would anyone want to be a tranny granny? I still don't get that. You know what it's all about. It's about psychosis. You know it's a mental disorder. You know that it needed treatment. You know that in your day, the man would have been in a bug house, unless he was uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Then he would have been running the FBI. But uh, let's put that aside for the moment. What does it mean to be an American? And why should you have hope for America? When I began a radio, I said America is, the, is, is dying. It's being undermined from within. That's certainly not true when you look at Bill and Hillary Clinton. You know, they made believe they were doing good, and boy, did they do well indeed. In the classic tradition of the missionaries who uh, went to Hawaii to do good and did very well indeed, owning most of the land five generations later, the Clintons are sort of missionaries of the poor in the third world, and they've done very well indeed. Liberalism is a good business. Look how it's worked for Nancy Pelosi. Look at the richest people in America. They're all liberals. How does that work? How is it that Dianne Feinstein has enriched herself while being in office all these years and she's espoused the liberal causes while San Francisco is turned into a toilet, a dirty, overflowing toilet, while this woman walks around there on Pacific Heights like she, she owns the place? How is it that Nancy Pelosi's enriched herself while she's in office, while the city is a cesspool, not only a psychological and social cesspool, but the streets themselves look like an open sewer? What do you want to talk about? I don't know if you want to talk about any of this. I don't know if I want to talk about any of this. I think what I'll do instead right now is something that broadcasters used to do in order to get ready for a show, which is test all of the stops. And they would get on the air, and before they'd go on the air, they'd go, ah, e, o, a, l, mm. So everyone say om during the break. And when you're through doing your om, I want you to hold your hands in front of you with your palms up. And I want you to make believe you're praying to Allah. And then I want you to go, Om. Um, I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Stand. I used to like to get some falafel, and next to the falafel stand in Sproul Plaza, there was these uh, Krishnites. They had their shaved heads, and the girls had the underarm hair, and they danced. And no one, I, never, I never understood the Krishnites, what they were. They seemed like a benign group. I used to like it, you know, watch them. The tune kind of kind of sticks in my mind like an Elvis Presley tune. But here we are years later. School takes kids on field trip to sex shop. Parents who send their kids to the Gaia Democratic School <laughs> intend for them to get a liberal education. But the psychopathic degenerates who run the school took a group of teens and preteens to a sex shop for a lesson in sex education. Well, that was too much for the uh, progressive parents. One of them said it's just a major breach of trust. Her 11 and 13 year old daughters were among the students taken to the smitten kitten porno shop last week. Can you believe the world we're living in? There's a, a lot of reasons this is happening, but the main reason is, is because of the lack of leadership at the top. A fish rots from the head down, and because Obama has a rotten soul and no leadership and hates America, according to millions of sane, educated, patriotic, working Americans who know what he's doing, the country is dying. Darwin, WABC, Mr. Darwin, welcome to the Savage Nation. Darwin, you're on the radio. What's on your mind? Yeah, I'd just like to know if uh, I'm rolling in my grave right now because uh, natural selection is just blown out the window. In other words, we're not naturally selecting the, the fittest to survive. We're selecting the unfittest. Not only that, but, uh, I mean, animals know what to do. Why don't people? Because animals are smarter than this breed of animal. Why do you, why do you think many of us are so enamored of our pets? Because they're more sane than human beings are. I trust I trust animals more than I do people right now. Like I have to tell you honestly. Have you ever seen anything like what we're living through right now? Do you actually believe this country can survive 
two more years of this this regime? Honestly, I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, what what will he do next to drive a stake in the heart of America? We wake up every day waiting to see what him and his minions, the sorority, will do next. Every day we wake up, we don't know what he's going to do next. You know, you could laugh at him and say he's an incompetent boob, but he isn't. He's a very competent, destructive individual. But look, we all know this. And what's the point of talking about it? He attacked the police for six straight months, and now police are dying, and the thugs are burning cities to the ground. What's next? Which city will go up in flames next? And I, I have two young daughters at home, and I, I honestly, I'm, I'm in fear of what they have to face. Well, what you should do, which city do you live in, New York? New York, yes, sir. Well, you should look for some alternative school, like a Gaia school. Well, you know, who they believe they teach them about the environment and progressive values. Then you could wake up, and maybe you find they took your daughter to a porno shop. That's what progressives do. See, they don't understand that there are consequences to their mindset, which is the lack of a mindset. They have no idea that when you blow up morality, what you wind up with is Gaia. And when you start worshiping nature, what you wind up with is psychosis. 855-407-282. Okay, my friend, I'm going to make your day a better day. Free copy for Father's Day of Countdown to Mecca. I'm going to give you a Father's Day gift. 855-407-282. When I come back... Listen to what happened to these kids in the porno shop. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. No more tofu music. The name Michael, Mikael, from the Hebrew, it means who is like God. And the answer is no one is like God. From the Greek, it means he who overthrows icons. I learned that a long time ago, which actually is fitting. I'm an anti-iconic guy. In the Bible, St. Michael was the conqueror of Satan and patron saint of soldiers. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, good luck to that, Mike. Mikael. School takes... I can't get rid of the story. School takes kids on field trip to a sex shop. But, you know, they got what they deserved. These are so-called progressive lunatics. They send their poor children to be indoctrinated in the environment. And the next thing that they wake up and their little children are being taken to a, a, a porno shop. The leader of the small Minneapolis school took about a dozen middle and high school age students on the field trip to the sex shop in which porno magazine covers and products were in full view of the children. You just can't erase those images, said Lynn Floyd, one of the parents. Well, what is she complaining for? She sent him to the Gaia Democratic School. But the director of the Gaia Democratic School and the host of the field trip to the porno shop defended the outing to the local newspaper, saying it represented the climax of a months-long sex education class. You hear what the children are learning? Not how to do mathematics, not how to do chemistry, not how to do computer sciences, but on human sexuality and the environment. And you wonder why these children grow up incapable of doing anything except working for the government. Gaia is a 12, K-12 school with a motto promising academic freedom. I guess that means they can do whatever they want with no discipline. Youth empowerment. I guess that means they can punch another student in the nose. And democratic education uh, about the environment. According to its website, the Gaia school teaches students to, quote, be quote, one with the universe, and to raise the consciousness of humankind to a new level of sensitivity about the inherent goodness of all people. Why don't you tell that to the Muslim who just tried to cut, cut a cop's head off in Boston? Tell it to the other ones they're bringing in uh, under asylum, uh, the, uh, guy, the, the guys of asylum, you idiots. The school has about 25 students, including several described by administrators as transgender. Isn't that? That's very inclusive. I'm sure they spend more time with the transgendered students' view of the world and uh, advice on nail polish, stockings, and shoes than they do on science and technology. Now, here, here's the punchline. Take a guess where the sicko school is housed in a Unitarian Universalist church in Minneapolis. Well, that un unto itself says what it is. Well, what is a Unitarian Universalist? Uh, you ever look into that church? Look, why go into this? We know that these are mentally ill people, and now they're harming their children. They wake up and find out the kids are taken to a porno shop. What do they expect to happen? They're going to be taken to a church? 
Okay, what do you want to talk about? I got lots of good callers. We're going to give away books. We're going to read scholarships. I don't know if I can take any more of the bad news. In my day, the principal was put into the prison. In my day, the, pr the principal of this school is arrested immediately by the FBI and arrested on child endangerment charges. The school is closed down and fumigated. The children are taken away from the parents and put into a re-education uh, program to teach them to be decent parents. Next case, Judge Savage. Give me another question. I'll hit the hammer down. I'll, be, I'll do the hammer. You want me to do an anvil, for, uh, a hammer on the, th on the gavel? Ask me what I would do in the next case of anything in this country. You want my answer from Mikael, who is like God? It's not me. I'm just one man with an opinion. And if you don't like it, go listen to NPR or go listen to one of the government jesters like Bill Maher, who has stuff written for him by psychopaths. He sips vodka in the Chateau Marmont with his legs crossed. Let him try a talk show without some written uh, scripts, see where he goes. Why am I so angry at those people? I have no idea. Because I think they're one of the reasons for the demise of the American youth. I think I want to play some music. I want to hear Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, I Want You to Be My Girl. Or uh, the Dells, Oh What a Night. Or the Moon Glows, Secret Love. Or the Paragons, Let's Start All Over Again. I did the Shirelles dedicated to the one I love. Or Robert and Johnny, We Belong Together. And then maybe I'll be ready to talk about some of the psychopathic news uh, of the day. How do we go from men storming the beaches at Anzio to men having their schmendricks cut off to be a grandmother? Do you know anyone who wants to be a 65-year-old grand, a, a woman at 65? Most women don't want to be 65. Why would a man want to be 60, a 65-year-old tranny granny? I don't get it. Answer. I know. I know exactly. I know. Please. So let me turn to something positive here. What it means to be an American. Look, we have to laugh at them. The only thing left for us is mocking the psychopaths and mocking the president for what he's doing to the country. Because the day we lose the ability to ridicule them or use sarcasm is the day that America dies. It hasn't died yet. As long as we still have the power of sarcasm to put them down, ridicule them, skewer them, make them into the mockeries that they are, we are free people. You can't do that in North Korea, can you? We've become as fat as a hog. What is he on? What diet is he on? I guarantee he's not eating kimchi. What it means, to, I can't read these right now. Obama says to Axelrod, I am the closest thing to a Jew ever to sit in the White House. Huh. Well, he's right. Liberal Jews in the Upper East Side of Manhattan and he are one and the same. He goes there and talks to the fools about being the best friend of Israel and the idiots applaud him. <laughs> look at him, look who's here, look at that. Yeah, he's the best friend Jews ever had, self-hating Jews who want to die. No question about that. WBAP, Linnell, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, Savage. Hey, we love you over here. <laughs> you should. I'm gonna, I hope you'll make me an honorary Texan for the great work that I do. I'm a transplant, too, and this is where we're supposed to... Did you say you're a transgender, too? Oh, yeah, from California. What, you're, a tra you're a transgender? <laughs> no, transplant. Uh, now, whenever I hear the word trans, I reach for my Glock. I don't know what's going to come out next. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that word. I mean, I used to know what cis and trans were meant from chemistry. The cis form and the trans form. But now I know that the trans form means the cis form when it comes to people. So what's on your mind? Well, you know what? <laughs> um, America hasn't failed, Michael. Um. Are you there? What's going on? Are you crying? Why? Well, you're taking this personally? Why? Well, don't take it personally. We have, a, we have a sick traitor in the White House who hates everything about this country, and he's leading us over the cliff. And then we have a group of traitors bigger than him called Mitch McConnell and Company who will sell the country down the river for another dollar profit. So, no, I understand what's going on. We have no government. There's a government not of the people, by the people, and for the people. I know what happened. The people of America have failed this country okay and don't insult our lady liberty ever again it's not her fault where are the good patriotic strong men of this country that are supposed to defend her honor i don't understand it well you, there's plenty of them just go out in the street and look most of them are wearing uniforms with guns they're called cops i know i love my don't, don't for one minute think that's an easy job it's the hardest job in america next to being a teacher in this country through that it's the most unbelievable situation i have ever seen in my why do you life. think obama 
this try to destroy the local police departments? Why do you think he targeted them along with the devil Al Sharpton and the other devil Holder? Why did they target U.S. police? What were they trying to do? They were trying to take down our defense cells so we would be totally vulnerable to a federal government takeover of all local police departments so the vile, evil, anti-American filth could take over and create a, an SS or an SA to, to rule over every aspect of our lives. Yeah, they gotta and let me tell you something else. McConnell and Boehner would go along with it in a, in a heartbeat. I never thought I'd see anything like that. After this election that we took over with the um, conservatives that, that we fought. Um, what I know. Happened? That's right. We voted to throw the liberal agenda in the toilet where it belonged to begin with. We said flush it. It's garbage. It's filth. It's destroying us. It's weakening us. Get rid of it. What happened? Tell me what happened. It got worse. It metastasized the very next day. Yeah, so I could. All right, darling. Don't, don't cry over this because it's only going to make you weaker and sicker. It is heartbreaking if you let it get to you, but I'm trying to tell people that there's a way to cope with this. You need coping skills to live through the hell that this man's putting us through. And everyone has their own way of coping. You must have them. Do you have children? Oh, yeah, I have a grown son. Hell yeah. And does he does he give you any any pleasure? What's that? Does he give you any pleasure in your life? Absolutely. He's a patriotic young man who loves his country and if he could go out and fight, he would. He can't. He's disabled, but you know, he does work in other ways to help. But he country. represents millions and millions of American men and women who love the country. They see right through the charlatan in the White House. They see through the Republican Party as well. And they understand that they have to tough it out and get through this the best way they can. What? The Darling, I'm sending you a book for Father's Day. You can give it to your son called Countdown to Mecca, if anyone reads anymore. Let alone the people not read. Uh, does anyone write books anymore? That's like a dying art. I should be put in a museum. I don't know anybody else who writes books. Books? Ooh, what are those? Paper? Ooh, what a waste of environmental stuff. Ooh, look at that. Paper comes from trees. That's so on. I expect to wake up any day and hear that there's going to be a book burning by the forces of Gaia in America to protest cutting down trees to make paper, to make books, that it's anti-environmental to have a book at all. And I expect that there'll be a book burning any day by the liberals. Since they burnt the society down, they may as well go after the literature of it as well. Okay, what would you like to talk about? M-A-L, Kate, a woman, thank God. Uh, welcome to the program, Kate. What's on your mind? Well, I have a point to make, and I also have an answer to your question of how our children got ruined. I also wanted to say I pray for you every day for your health and your happiness and your safety. Well, I could have used it for the last week or two. I've been fighting this flu brought in by the Honduran children of Obama. I use peppermint oil for flu. All right, let's not do remedies, please. The show will be over. What's on your, what's on your mind? My point is I'm really disappointed and disgusted with people who are putting the burden on people like you to speak out. Why can't people talk to each other? You take all the flack. It's time for people to stand up and say, stop, or to say to their family or neighbor, by the way, do you know what happened while you were sleeping last night? What, ha what they signed, what they put into rules, what, how much more they're controlling every aspect of everything? Right, and spying on Americans under the guise of freedom. I understand what's going on. And I don't, I don't want to sit here like a victim because I have the freedom to not do radio. You've got to understand something. I have the ultimate freedom. I could quit radio tomorrow and never write another book and never be seen again. But I do it every day because I have a grandchild. I don't want to leave her a destroyed country run by psychopathic leftists. So I get up every day and I dedicate the show not only to her, but the millions and millions of other grandchildren out there and the tens of millions of children out there who need a country to grow up in, not a sick cesspool like San Francisco. And that's what motivates me. Take it's not people, people think that I do this because I need the money or I want the money. It's not why I do it. Of course, I want to be rewarded for my work, but that's not the point. And you say, well, what kind of pain do you really suffer? You're doing well. Would you like to hear it one day? What kind of pain we suffer, those of us on the conservative side? Let's talk about becoming social outcasts. 
Let's talk about the fact that instead of being given the the uh, uh, awards that we deserve, we are called every name under the sun by the vermin who run the newspapers. Or let us say, as in the ex-Soviet Union, where when they wanted to destroy a man's reputation, what they did, the worst thing they could do to him was not attack him, but ignore him and make believe he didn't exist. So here's a man with first-class college degrees, great work in science, 30 books to his credit, et cetera, on and on and on, who they pretend I don't exist in liberal circles. So you say, well, that's the price you have to pay. How do you explain the fact that the New York Times bestseller list, which lists the books in order of their sales in stores across America, will not even note that Countdown to Mecca, my third novel in this series, outsold five other books for the first two weeks of its publication. That is right out of the playbook of the ex-Soviet Union run by Pinchy Sulzberger and the psychos at the NYT. So you say, well, what price did you really pay? So you're not on the list. What does it matter to you? Does it really matter to me? What really matters to me? Very few things. Family and health, that's what matters to anybody at the end of the day. What else can you do? Can you really take, what if you w wake up one day and you find that you actually do have a traitor in the White House? Tell me what a traitor in the White House would do that Obama hasn't done or will do. That's a good question for the day. Let's say these words are too harsh for the average person. Did I say to you that he is a traitor? That everything he does, melting, let's start with one thing. The borders, he melted the borders down with Mexico so terrorists and diseased are flooding into the country, Right? Is that not the act of a terrorist? So what else could a terrorist do to this country that he has done, that he has not done already? Explain to me. Think about it and tell me that I'm wrong. I got to take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. I have very little time. I want to start with Ralph on WABC. He has a great point to make. Let's listen in. Ralph, welcome to the program. Please make your point. How you doing, Mr. Savage? It's an honor to talk to you, and I've been listening to you for a very long time. And I've always been listening to you and the hope that you always gave us that this country will defeat these liberal people and always given us hope for that. And now I listen to you. I listen to you now, and every time all I'm hearing is how m more this country is being right. You're absolutely right. I apologize for it, but I didn't create the news. And, Ralph, i got to tell you this. Sometimes it's the darkest before the dawn. I believe that the filth that is running this country, the filth that is running New York, the filth that is running the world, the filth that is running everything in the West has so polluted the atmosphere that the people are waking up to the filth. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. All right, raise the flag, Hardys. We're going into the trenches. We're taking on the enemy. Take a look at the doll that tried to behead cops in Boston. Take a look at his face. No comment from Obama. No comment for Sharpton. No comment from, uh, from the rest of them who attacked police. Boston suspects allegedly hatched an ISIS-inspired plot to cut the head off policemen. Luckily, the police shot their brains out and sent them to the 72 virgins that were waiting for them. Boston area man named Osama Raymond. Osama Raymond, I guess they can change his name to Gloria Fitzgerald, was shot and killed by police Tuesday when he came at them with a knife. And he was plotting with another suspect uh, who police arrested and identified as David Wright to take off the head of police officers. What a job they have. Bring in more of them. I say bring in more and more and more from the Middle East, from Africa, 
Don't vet them because that would be racist to do any kind of a religious or racial profiling. Bring them in and let them cut someone's head off and then say, well, whoops. Better that we let someone's head be cut off than we, let's say, look down upon Muslims. You know, you get what I'm saying? You don't want to make anyone uncomfortable in America. What you want to do is err on the side of liberalism in every case. All right, Ralph, WABC, welcome back to the program. So you, you used to listen to talk radio for hope, and now all you hear is about the bad news. So do you still listen at all or in and out? Well, no, I, I, I try to listen to you every day. It's like, you know, years ago, we were fighting liberalism, you know, and we were doing good, and there was hope. All right, and then we lost. For the number one reason we lost is that we had traitors in the Republican Party, inveigle us into believing that they would listen to the people. So the enemy is not Obama. We know who he is. We know he's always been an enemy of America. We know he was trained to hate everything good about the country. We know he hates patriots. We know he hates the military. We know he hates the police. We know he's destroyed our borders, language, and culture. But the Republicans was, were put into power back in November to stop this disease, weren't they? Yes, they were, and they are. So the enemy is not the liberal. The enemy is the fake Republican like McConnell and Boehner and the other power structure individuals who are in there only and solely to advance the interests of the powerful international corporations. Exactly. They're, they're the biggest problem. They're the, they're the false hope. We put them in office to protect us. And well, what can I what can I do about it? So you say, well, why listen to talk radio then if it's all negative? Isn't that what you're really saying? Well, no, I, I'm still listening to it because now uh, it's opening my eyes to see the destruction of the country and to see, to be aware of it and to warn people about what's going on and trying well, to... You, you live in New York City. Take a look at what the communist who's running New York has done. There's a thing he calls a shooting epidemic. Did you read the New York Post this morning? He calls it a shooting epidemic or shooting problem, excuse me. He doesn't even call it a shooting epidemic, a shooting problem. Yeah. That's... And, that, that's that, that's de Blasio, is a man who's never found anything that he likes about America, has somehow inveigled his way into become the mayor of the biggest city in the country, and he doesn't want to admit that it's his elimination of stop and frisk that has enabled the murderous animals in the streets with guns to shoot with impunity. Yep. Uh, he, he says they're still doing it, but now they have to have a reason to frisk them. Well, when a cop pulls somebody over for doing something wrong, He's going to pat them down anyway. So they're just going back to the way it used to be instead of going over the people and patting them down and talking with them and possibly... Well, look, de Blasio is a twin for Obama in New York City, and they are the two biggest problems in the United States of America right now, but they're not the only ones. I linked the story up that nobody could actually believe is true, and it's on michaelsavage.com. Left, uh, here it is, from the Weekly Standard. Fascist Dem Senator wants Rico thrown at climate skeptics. I'm not making this up. A man named, I, I don't remember his name. He's from Rhode Island. He's got a weird name. I can't remember. Senator used Rico laws to prosecute global warming skeptics. And that is a Democratic Senator from Rhode Island. He said that anyone who, who doubts the global warming lie should be prosecuted using Rico statutes. Do you have any idea what that means? That means we could all be arrested? <laughs> that means that the Democrats have become outright Nazis. A sitting U.S. senator is suggesting using the RICO laws to anyone who questions the global warming lie. Sheldon Whitehouse, can you imagine a man like that is a U.S. senator from Rhode Island? Can you imagine you'd wake up to a thing like this in your lifetime? It's the communist states of America. That's, that's what we're turning into. All right, so wait a minute. So you say, well, why listen to this? Don't you think you should know that there are Democrats like Sheldon Whitehouse who would like to arrest anyone who questions their authority? Yes. Don't you think it's important for me as Michael Savage talk show host to point out who the worst of them are in order to make people, even so-called liberals, awaken to the monstrous Frankensteins that they put in power? You, you, I mean, come on. There's a reason for this show. So I'm, I'm going to give you a copy of Countdown to Mecca as a gift for being a good sport. Uh, stay on the line. Now let's go to WYAB Radio. I, that's in Mississippi, isn't it? Better be in Mississippi. Elwood, rec welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Elwood? 
I inadvertently uh, apparently scared the living daylights out of a uh, Muslim family with your latest excellent book, and I thought you might like it. Wait, wait, hold it. You scared the daylights out of a Muslim family? How? I was killing some time in a hotel lobby waiting for my wife and uh, passing the time as I normally do, reading the best book I can get my hands on. And a Muslim family was checking out with uh, two small families. I'm assuming they were Muslim. She had a headscarf. He had a beard. Two cute little girls. So I was making faces and playing with the little kids while Mom and Dad checked out. And they turned around when they were finished, smiled at me. I smiled at them. All of a sudden, the wife's eyes got about the size of dinner plates. She said something in Farsi to her husband. He looked at me. His eyes got about as big as dinner plates. I grabbed the kids and left skid marks. And I'm like, what the heck? And then I looked at what I was reading. I got to tell you, that is one killer dust jacket you got on that thing, Doc. Oh, you mean they got frightened of the cover countdown to Mecca? They looked down. I, I, I said to the desk clerk, I said, was it something I said? He said, no, I think it was something you read. Well, I, I think that Obama should hear about this. And since the book cover makes Muslims uncomfortable, I think it should be banned or burned. I think that the good liberals in America should round up all these copies they can get their hands on and burn them. Because well, we don't want to offend any Muslims who don't read English. They don't even know what's in the book. It's the opposite of the title. But, uh, I mean, you know, let's get into book burning. Now, maybe that would make them feel safe in, their, in the new country that they're in. I was thinking billboards. Yeah. But that, well, what is it about the title that scared them? What scares them about Countdown to Mecca? I, I, obviously, they took it the wrong way. I think they thought that meant... Exactly the opposite of the thesis. Yeah, well, I guess they don't have the time to read the book. They have time only for a single book called the Quran. Now, there are certain phrases in the Quran that worry me, frankly, that I think should be banned uh, around the world. I think anyone who wants to come to this country should not be allowed to uh, either preach from a Quran, which says kill the infidel, or to, to repeat in a prayer three times a day or six times a day uh, any such rubbish about killing Jews and Christians or cutting people's throats. Why should such a book be permitted in America? Can you explain that to me? Um, I can only uh, point to the current administration, uh, the liberal media. And the well, then the administration didn't write the Koran. <laughs> well, they're certainly sanctioning it. Yeah, but I'm saying that any religion that teaches to kill is not a religion by definition. It is something other than a religion. And I think it's time to expunge Bibles, even, that call for killing of people. And I'll go a step further to show you how clear, clear-eyed I am on this. I have read almost all of the Buddhist, uh, they call it a Bible, it's not a Bible, the teachings of Buddha really is a philosophy. I have read cover to cover, I've never seen one phrase in there about killing anyone. Do you know that? That's true. I have read the entire New Testament. I have not seen one phrase in the New Testament which says, kill your neighbor if he doesn't practice your religion or follow your ways. I cannot say the same thing about the Old Testament. I think the Old Testament, while it is not practiced literally by Jews, needs to be revised. And any references to killing adulterers, any references to killing homosexuals, should be expunged from any new additions. That's my opinion. And the same should go for the Quran. And so I want people to understand that we have to evolve past these 5,000-year-old blood libels that were written in holy books, whether they be Jewish or Muslim. And I'm sorry for having lumped them together, but there's a certain similarity that is overwhelmingly negative for the human race. That's the clearest thing I've ever said, by the way, about holy books. Do you know that? I realized that, and it was well said. And I said it right off the cuff because I just had lunch so I could think again. I found myself faltering because I didn't have my cup of green peas and a half a hamburger and two french fries and, and onions. But now that the uh, nutrients have circulated to my brain, I was able, able to say what I want. I'm not going to make any friends in the Jewish community with this, but it's too bad. I am sorry. If the Old Testament still teaches to kill homosexuals, it should be expunged. If the Old Testament says kill an adulterer, it needs to be expunged because that has no place in the world in which we live. And moreover, the Quran has many such phrases. Kill the infidel, don't trust them, don't do this, cut their throat. There's 101 such references to violence in the Quran. What sane nation permits that in their country? None. What can I say? I don't see it in Buddhism. I don't see it in Christianity. I don't see it in the Hindu tractates. 
But I do see it elsewhere, and I'm sick and tired of it. My friend, I'm sending you another copy of Countdown to Mecca to give away to a local uh, family. They could be Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Zoroastrians. They could be vegetarian. They could be transgendered. I don't care. You can give it away to your local transgender there in Mississippi. They may enjoy reading it. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? WMAL in Washington, D.C. Thomas. Oh, you heard. I got to take a break. Just remember the name. A senator from uh, Rhode Island, Sheldon Whitehouse, said that anyone who has skepticism about global warming should be prosecuted under RICO statutes that were written to, bu to bust organized crime. As far as I am concerned, that definition of organized crime applies to Sheldon Whitehouse. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. <laughs> you know what? I mocked them all. Martha Washington, you think I give a damn what she thinks about me? Bill O'Reilly in a skirt, that's all. Another another little Hitler sitting there. So I said the most controversial thing in my entire 21 years in the last segment. I stumbled upon it. I was talking about how many times the Quran attacks non-Muslims. And it does 120 times. The Quran invokes kill the infidel 120 times. And I asked what kind of sane nation permits these people to practice such open hatred. And I said that the Quran should be modified to take out such hatred. And I said it's same should be done for the Old Testament. And I knew what would happen. I will lose my entire Orthodox Jewish listenership. But it's time we got it on. It's time we got it on. It's time we discussed this. Paul on KKOH, you say that I'm wrong for suggesting that. Well, go ahead. You say it in your own words. Go ahead, please. Well, I think that you uh, allowed the hatred and the, the blasphemy of the Quran to influence your opinion about the Old Testament to the point that... Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But don't you... Well, let's, let's back it up. Where do you think Muhammad got many of his writings from? He got it from the Jews and the Christians because it was the third religion in the series. You know that, correct? Definitely. Okay. So he, bor he borrowed most of his teachings from the, from the Jews who he then hated. And he created his own religion. But if you read uh, Ecclesiastes, you don't practice what Ecclesiastes teach, Leviticus teaches, do you? No, of course not. Then why do you want it in your Bible? Why do you want it in a Bible that says, and if a man lie with mankind as with womankind, both of them have committed abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Why would you still need that in your Bible if you have evolved past that belief? It's indicative of how God feels about certain things. So it's God who you are interpreting. You're saying God feels that way about gays. But don't you understand that weak-minded individuals take that literally and then kill them? Does that mean that every book that's uh, been written should be, should be uh, expurgated? I didn't say every book. I just said the Old Testament and the Quran. Why pick on the Old Testament? Because it has shaped the minds of man in the West for 5,000 years. And I believe that Jews need to understand that there are that words have a powerful effect upon the minds of man. Absolutely. The Old Testament in, in its entirety teaches lessons. Some lessons are hard to some lessons don't go down with a bitter swallow, a bitter pill. They're still valid. And if you you're left, Okay, here we go. Leviticus twenty seven. A man also or a woman that divineth by a ghost or a familiar spirit shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Now, Muslims practice that in the old world, don't they? Yes, they do. And Jews do not practice that, whether they're orthodox or reformed. They do not practice that because they recognize how absurd that is, that if someone is a fortune teller, they should not kill them. They know that. Then why do they need that in their Bible? You, you'll have to ask the imams about that. No, I, no, I'll ask you as an Orthodox Jew who says that we should not censor the Old Testament. It's an interesting question. Well, that's, that's what you were suggesting, though, to either uh, censor or, or line item uh, out certain passages and phrases uh, of a... Right. If, I would say that any, quote, holy book that calls for killing someone, 
uh, should be exper- expunged from the holy book. That's correct. I stand by those words. No one's ever said that in radio history. It's too daring and it's too risky. Because you risk alienating millions of people who practice these things, or if they don't openly practice these things, they, they ascribe to them and wish someone else would kill gays or women who commit adultery. But where do they get these ideas from? Paul, it's a very important question. And although I'm the first to raise the question, I won't be the last, I can guarantee you. And I hope you won't keep this, uh, put this against me, but I can guarantee you the entire Chabad community, which allegedly listens to me, will not listen to me anymore. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Today I am Michael. I know why God created me. You know, of all my decades on Earth, I've often wondered why I'm here and what the meaning of life is. Is there a meaning to life? Is there an afterlife? Will I be rewarded? Will I be punished? Have any of my works had any value? You know, we, we ask these questions, those of us who actually produce things. And today I stumbled upon the most revolutionary thought I've ever had that I've ever expressed uh, in public, which is to expunge violence out of the Old Testament and the Quran. And this is a uh, an idea that's long overdue. And I want to tell you how it began. A gentleman called from Mississippi, said he was sitting in a hotel lobby reading my book Countdown to Mecca. And a Muslim family was shocked when they saw the cover of the book and they ran out looking like they were terrified. Of course, they didn't understand what was in the book. But it scared them. And I said, I'm more frightened of their Quran than they should be in my novel, Countdown to Mecca. And then I go to page 37 of Countdown to Mecca, where the generals who are plotting to blow up Mecca are talking about the Quran. And it's all factual. And the Quran invokes, kill the infidel 120 times, says one general who wants to blow up Mecca. And he says, what kind of sane nation permits these people to practice such open hatred? And of course, my hero, Jack, tries to stop them from blowing up Mecca, but I don't, I don't want to bother you with the facts. Most of you have your minds uh, already brainwashed. The Quran, verse 812, just one of the more than 100 verses that call Muslims to war with what they call non-believers. And who do they call non-believers, asked General Brooks. Quote, anyone who isn't Muslim. Quran 551 states that Muslims are not to take Jews and the Christians for friends. Allah describes them as unjust people. So I have to say to you that we are so late in human evolution that we as a, as a race, a human race, have to decide where do these illiterate morons who become suicide bombers get their ideas from? Where do these inbred morons get the idea that it's okay to blow up other Muslims, Christians, Jews, anyone that is not like them? Where do they get these ideas from? They get it from some filthy imam in a dirty, filthy temple somewhere who says, oh, look at the holy book, look what it says, Allah says, kill the infidel. And the subhuman is willing to put explosives on his or her body to blow people up because they see it in a holy book. So that begs the question of what is a holy book? What sane nation would permit an entire people to come in with such a holy book? So I said, well, people are going to accuse you of being a racist if you say the Quran should expunge such violent uh, statements from their holy book. I said, well, let's be fair about it. I happen to be, I would say, not a noted biblical scholar, but I would say that in my decades on earth, I probably read the Bible as much as any, let's say, any other man who's not that religious. And my personal Bible, the Holy Scriptures, according to the Masoretic text, uh, I've had for 40 years, and I have hundreds of post-its in it from the Holy Book. And the one book that I never read from is the Leviticus, because in Leviticus, it talks about sin and killing people. And you know about, they say, if a man sleeps with a man, you should stone him to death. If a woman commits adultery, stone her to death. If uh, someone divines by, I don't know, like witchcraft, kill him. If it says, uh, the, the kill this one, kill that one, that one, kill this one, kill the... And I'm saying, wait a minute, Jews don't take this literally anymore. They mumbo jumbo it in the in the temple in Hebrew, and they don't actually go out and do this stuff, because they've had a, an evolution, societal evolution over the over the centuries. But unfortunately, there are millions of people who are ignoramuses who have no literacy whatsoever. They believe in the single sufficiency of a single book called the Quran, and uh, they believe it. They take it literally, and they are a danger to the entire world, including their their Muslim brethren. 
So what do we as an open society do? We let people say things like that and teach it as a religion? Now, I understand what you're going to say. You're going to say, Savage, doesn't this lead to censorship? Won't this lead to censorship? If you say that the Bible, the Holy, the Orthodox Bible, it's called the Old Testament. Many of you don't even know it. You know that many Jews don't know what the Old Testament is. Most liberal Jews have no idea what the Old Testament is. They have no idea that that's different. All they know is different than the Christian Bible. They have no idea why it's different. But nevertheless, I'm supposed to know these things, and I've known them for 40 or 50 years, by the way, through my own learnings. So my revolutionary thought is that you have to take the violence out of the Old Testament and the Quran, Even though the Jews don't practice that type of homicide anymore for such violations of biblical law, I believe that there are those who have learned from this and do practice it in other religions. And as such, I think that as a human species, in order for us to survive, we have to look at such things. And I think this is the most revolutionary thought or idea I've ever presented on radio. And I beg anyone listening to this show, I challenge actually anyone listening to the show, to present anyone currently writing or speaking who has said anything more revolutionary than I have today on this show by accident. I didn't plan this. I'm not Bill Maher. I don't have a script. I don't have five writers for me. I do it on the natch. In other words, I get the news stories. I go with my emotions, moods, thoughts. And sometimes I move into areas I shouldn't move in. And perhaps I moved into an area I shouldn't have moved into because this is a sacred area. You understand that. You understand that there are people who will now condemn me who were allegedly my listeners and friends. And I will say it's time they had a discussion in their own communities about what they're teaching themselves and their children. So let's move on now to some of the callers who have taken umbrage with what I've said. John on KSFO. John, go ahead. Make your point. Yeah, um, I, I really think you almost have a point, but I, I in another way, i completely off. You start, I'm not a Jew, I, I think if you start editing the Koran or um, uh, the Old Testament or anything else, it'll give liberals to edit your personal books. Okay, and now hold on, hold on, That's, there's a simple answer to that. Fortunately, I can figure that one out Im immediately. I didn't say censor books at all. I said censor books that pose as religious books or that are taken as religious books that are taught to millions of people as the word of God. None of the literature that I write or any movie that I've ever seen pretends to be the word of God. None of it poses as a religion that should be taught or, uh, through indoctrination to children. But you do. So, so in other words, what I'm suggesting is that if anyone is, is promoting a religion which teaches hatred and murder, that by definition is not a religion. But you d you do understand that countries like Iran go in and get these imams to go uh, preach in their synagogues to blow up uh, Israel and pay. Well, they, they don't have synagogues. They have temples of Satan in Iran, where they teach hatred and murder. I understand that, but I can't change the minds of the throwbacks in Iran. I can only influence some people here in the United States of America. So I'm not worried about the throwbacks in Iran. I, pr I hope one day we'll have a president who knows how to deal with them, which is to turn Tehran into glass if they keep this up. We don't have a problem in America with Muslims, as far as I understand, blowing things up constantly like they were doing in Israel. It's in the other countries with ISIS. Why is it that the Muslim religion seems to produce people who have produced nothing for hundreds of years except destruction? How is it that a religion can indoctrinate people to a point where you almost never see a Nobel Prize in science or medicine and all you see are the most devious ways of hurting and maiming and blowing things up? Where does that come from? I think it comes from the new form of the Muslim religion. The older form, I mean, weren't they the ones in that area that created the zero for... You know, yeah, yeah, that was a thousand years ago. But after the zero, they haven't, there's been a big blank spot. Yeah, and I think their religion... I know that according to Obama, uh, the Muslims created NASA. I think they were advanced in space science. I guess they got that on their trips to the virgins. But I don't know where they got that from. Yeah, they're now just you, you remember that the new clown that they put in charge of NASA a few years ago said that Muslims helped create space science in America? I, I don't know where he got that one from. Well, I, I think... That, that sounds like a Nation of Islam tract. I think that between the liberalism idea and the, the, Mus, uh, the Muslim idea of today is ruining the world. You've got the Muslims who 
are basically in charge of NASA that have pretty much killed it because of Obama, and uh, the ones in the Middle East that want to butcher anything that, that thinks differently from them. All right, but my point is not about Muslims or uh, Islam around the world. I'm focused only on the United States of America, and I made a revolutionary statement, which is to take the violence out of the Quran. Any Quran brought into America, anyone taught that you should kill homosexuals, anyone who was teaching that you should kill adulterers, anyone who teaches that you should kill, uh, let us say, uh, a, a, I, well, how do you put it? witchcraft, if you want to put it that way. It's really basically anyone doing anything but religion. Because it was competition for the, uh, for the healers, and the, excuse me, the religious people in those days. They didn't want competition from astrologers. They didn't want any competition from anybody who did anything but teach their holy books. They said, kill them, that's all. So I'm saying, anyone who teaches that is not teaching a religion, they're teaching hatred. And I think it's time for us to, to analyze this. Back then, when they I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca. Don't show it to anyone in your neighborhood. James, on, I know this is a controversial statement, and I know that many people are going to be infuriated by this, and I didn't do it to infuriate you. I did it to enlighten you. And I will repeat what I'm, what I'm sorry, what I said at the beginning of this segment. Every once in a while, things happen in your life where you know why you were created. And you know why you were born, and you know what you were created to do. Today is one of those days. I just had a moment in my radio career that I know I was created for. And that was to have, I don't think it's going to have any effect on Muslims whatsoever. Not one iota will have an effect on, on, on Muslims. They live in their own world. They're insular. They will take, take any such su suggestion as uh, racism. They'll, they'll come up with the standard garbage. I'm actually appealing to the Orthodox Jews to look inside their own religion. Because if you read Leviticus, which I avoid like the plague because it's filled with discussions of the plague, it's uh, of all of the original uh, books, the original books, the, the ten books of Moses, Leviticus is the one filled with all of the hate. There's some beautiful stuff in there, such as thou shalt not oppress thy neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but thou shalt fear thy God, I am the Lord. So there's some beautiful statements in Leviticus. It also says, and if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, you shall not do him wrong. There's some beautiful things in there. Thou shalt not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Well, that means Jews. But I guess you can have a grudge and vengeance against non-Jews. I don't particularly like that one. Now, then they say kill. If a man lie with mankind as with womankind, both of them have a committed abomination. They shall surely be put to death. How can you argue that that should still be taught? You may find such behavior disgusting and ungodly, and you have every right to believe that. But I don't believe it should be taught that they should be killed because there are those who follow it literally in the Muslim religion. And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall slay the beast. And if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down thereto, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a shameful thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of the children of their people. And they go on and on. It's amazing when you look at this stuff, but if you read it in context of the history of the time, the time in which it was written 5,000 years ago, it was a desert people. It was a much smaller body of people. And they needed laws to protect themselves against incense, incense, sorry, incense. I need a law to protect me from incense when I go to San Francisco. They needed laws to protect themselves from incest and such things, and they didn't want people becoming gay because it was a threat to the survival of the tribe. They certainly didn't want adultery because it would lead to the homicide between the men involved with that woman. So they had common sense laws as written in Leviticus, whether it was by God or by wise men, I don't have the answer for you. Jewish people believe it was the word of God. I'm not so sure it was all the word of God, nor does it matter what I think because I'm only a man. And the name Michael means who is like God and I'm not like God, I'm only a man. So don't think I'm confusing myself with being God-like. I'm confusing myself with nobody. I am just a rationalist. I'm a thinking man. I'm a modern man. I live in this world and I see what's going on in this world right now in real time as a result of Muslims who are slaughtering everybody around them. 
including fellow Muslims who are not fanatical enough for them. And I'm saying we better start cleaning up their act right in this country before it's too late. Since Osama bin Obama is bringing them in as fast as he can from Africa and dispersing them in as many Christian communities as he can, I think it's time that we talk to Osama bin Obama about what their holy book is teaching them to do with the Christians in their view. And that's all I have to say on this subject. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I just read and if a man lie with mankind as with womankind, both of them have committed abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Now, no Jew practices that, but it's in their holy book, in Leviticus, one of the ten books of Moses. And uh, they don't need a reformation. They know not to do it. But I'm saying that there are millions of Muslims who read the Quran, which has a similar uh, prohibition against homosexuality, and they kill gays. And I'm saying it's time to consider uh, eliminating such hateful statements from Bibles, whether they be the Old Testament or the Quran. Now, I realize how controversial this is. I get it. This does not apply to the Christian holy book because you won't find anything about killing people in it. It does not apply to the Buddhist, the teachings of Buddha, because I've read the entire teachings of Buddha. I can't find one reference to killing anybody. It's all about the way. I've not found it in any of the Hindu scripts, scriptures that I've read, and I'm no expert on any of those, but as an educated man, I felt it. Uh, my obligation to read the holy literature of the five principal religions of the world. And there's only one religion that actually acts out the teachings of uh, thousands of years ago. And there's another religion that reads it and, 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 and chants it every day, but doesn't act it out. And I'm saying that in the United States of America, we have to look at this. There's only so much the human species can take of this hatred and this confusion. And we have to evolve. And I realize how controversial this is. And I realize this is the most revolutionary suggestion I've ever made in the history of radio. And I will be here with God's will for another hour on your local station, except for the few that drop me against my will, to discuss this most important topic in the history of the Savage Nation. It all started when someone said countdown to Mecca scared Muslims in a hotel lobby. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The religion of Christianity, you look at the great works of art, and you look at the great science produced by people who have practiced modern Christianity, and you have to ask yourself with tears in your eyes, how could we be importing into this country people who bring a holy book which preaches nothing but hatred and destruction? What sane nation on earth would do this to themselves? Well, the answer, of course, is no sane nation would do this to themselves. No sane nation would bust their borders and let infected children to come in by the train load. Uh, no sane nation would permit a devious man in the White House who has decimated the whole meaning of the word nationhood uh, to continue to do this. No sane nation would do this, would they? So we, the people, still have some freedoms left, and one of the freedoms I have is freedom of speech. And in my ramblings today on the Savage Nation, I uh, had a caller in the last hour who said that he took a copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca, to a hotel lobby. He was reading it in Mississippi, and there was a Muslim couple with some nice children, and he was smiling at the children. They smiled at him, and as they left the hotel, they glanced at the title of the book, my novel, and they became... Uh, I don't know what he said. They got frightened and ran out of the hotel. I guess they didn't understand that the book is against blowing up Mecca, but okay, that's irrelevant. What's relevant is I'm more frightened of their Quran than they should be of my novel Countdown to Mecca because I call not for the 
uh, destruction of Mecca during a Hajj, but the exact opposite if you actually read the book. That led me to looking at religion per se and the holy books that are teaching such hatred. And you see millions, tens of millions of young people in the Muslim worlds being taught such hatred, inculcated, brainwashed, beaten into their heads every day and, and over and over and over. What are they being taught? Why, how, why do you think they kill homosexuals? Why do they stone adulterous women's to, women to death? Because they're taught to do it in their holy book. So I say, well, look, I can't control what goes on in uh, Shmakistan or Pakistan or Hakistan or Rakistan. But at least in America, we can talk about what the heck do you call a holy book? You mean a holy book says kill somebody, that's a holy book? By definition, it's not a religion. By definition, it's not a holy book. It's something else. It's not a religion. See, I never run that. What is a religion? Tell me what a religion is. What is a religion for? To me, a religion is to, uh, is to put pe people on the righteous path. So what is the righteous path? Well, boil it down to one statement. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's about it. There's kind of not one religion on earth that doesn't teach that except Islam. Every other religion on earth teaches you, do not do unto others that you would not have them do unto you. And that says it all, summarizes it all. The rest is just commentary. So I'm saying, look, it's the year 2015 that people are being blown up and killed around the globe because they're being brainwashed, killing gays, killing adulterers, killing pigeon breeders. Do you know that this son of a piece of garbage has killed young boys for flying pigeons? In the, in the land that ISIS has occupied in Iraq and Syria. This psychotic, this Hitler in a headscarf has killed young boys because they say that birds, breeding birds, offends Islam. They're sick. They're sick in the head. And Muslims know that. That's why Muslims are fighting them more vociferously than our uh, two-faced president. The Muslim from Jordan is fighting them. And the Muslim who runs Egypt, the most... Uh, populous Muslim nation on earth is fighting ISIS, but not us. Now, we have our men in our flying machines flying around targets for days on end, and we don't fire a rocket. Why? Because the sorority doesn't want to prosecute ISIS. But I want to put that aside. I want to focus on my revolutionary statement that violence should be purged from any holy book that has it in there, in America. I don't care what you do outside of America. Now, before we go to this discussion again, I want to direct you to michaelsavage.com where I will be posting a 12-minute segment on this from the last hour for you to listen tonight and send to friends. I want you to start a discussion on it. Right now, it's not up yet. It takes a while to get it done. But there is a link. No one else in the media has this yet. It says, see who was arrested in the child sex thing. And my guys worked on this all night long, and they got the names and pictures of every one of these lowlifes who uh, was, let us say, set up by the FBI, the local police, to have sex with minors. It's a sickening array of individuals. And amongst them is a Council on American Islamic Relations leader who uh, ran the youth division. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ahmed Abra Salim of Orlando, Florida, charged with travel to meet minor for sex, unlawful use of a two-way communications device, his occupation is coordinator, coordinator for care, employer is care of Orlando, traveled to UC location to have sex with 12-year-old girl, had an invest in kids specialty tag on his license plate. So you can go there and look at the names of him and Abraham Goodman and the others and look at it and weep. And now we'll go back to my revolutionary statement. Let's go to Jub, I'm sorry, G Day J Radio. Chris, welcome to the Savage Nation. Make your comment, please. Mike, I just want to tell you, this is a revolutionary day in, in radio. I've been waiting for this day for years. I now, wh wh okay, I understand what you're saying, but explain to the audience what you've been waiting for. Well, you just, I called you up at three or four months ago, and I said that Leviticus is, is, is a little squirrely, and you are the first man... Of, of stature to come out. I know you know him. and you I, I, I love Alex Jones' show. I think he's really great. He is great, and you, you have just trumped Alex Jones because what, what we need is, is, is somebody like you, and you've done it today. You have just exalted 
my spirit. I just can't tell you what, what, what every sect, every church, every religion needs to do is to explain what all of these books mean. And, and, and to have a I, I don't think you need to explain what it means. If you read the teachings of Buddha, they're pretty clear. It's basically the right path for people and doesn't talk about killing people you don't like. Yes. It's that simple. I, I'm not a Buddhist, but I mean, I can certainly appreciate the poetry of Buddhism. And I don't confuse Buddhism with, with the pacifism, by the way. Uh, let's not forget the history of Buddhism. It's filled with violence. Well, yes, but what, what we need to do is to have every church and every sect have a corollary book that explains what all of these strange... No, I, I don't want a corollary book. I want the statements that say kill a homosexual or kill an adulterer removed from the holy books. I want them, I want them purged from the books. Okay. That's all. I, I want it out. I want it out of these books. Now, it's, well, it's not going to happen. You know, no one on earth is going to do that. But, you know, I throw a pebble into this quiet pond of thought, and this pebble has a way of creating rivulets that go throughout the nation and the world. I've been very lucky with that my whole life. But I think that this was God's will, my bringing this topic up today. That's what I personally believe. You are, you are the bravest man I have ever heard. You have trumped Alex Jones today, and that's all. Well, that, that's saying a lot. His guy has great energy, and he's very bold, and he's very brave. That's true. But I, I don't want to make this into a thing of bravery or grand, grandiose ideas here. The idea itself is what I'd like to talk about. What is wrong with expunging violence from holy books in the United States of America, Chris? Tell me what's wrong with that idea. Oh, he's gone. I'm sorry. I couldn't do that. Uh, a man also or a woman that divineth by a ghost or a familiar spirit shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus 27. So that means they kill fortune tellers because the fortune tellers competed with the rabbis. It was bad for business. And they couldn't have any competition. I said, what, are you kidding? You're going to go see a, a, a rotten, stinking fortune teller with a filthy robe? No, this is God's right here. Stay here. No, I'm, I'm going to get a fortune teller. What are you, crazy? I kill him. A lot of it's just commercial, commercial competition. But a lot of it isn't. A lot of it's beautiful writing. You shall not round the corners of your heads. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Where'd that come from? Why do Orthodox Jews and Muslims wear such big beards? I realize hipsters do that as well, but let's put the hipsters aside. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. What does that mean? I don't see, we have a full beard or something. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, meaning when someone dies, you don't. You don't cut your skin, nor imprint any marks upon you. So they're against tattoos, the old Lenny Bruce joke. Well, Lenny Bruce came home with a tattoo on his shoulder, and he rolled his sleeve up, and his Aunt Minna saw him, and she screamed, ay, 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 you can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery. So he said to his Aunt Minna, Aunt Minna, stop being so hysterical. When I'm dead, cut my arm off. Bury me in a Jewish cemetery, and bury my arm in a Christian cemetery. You, <laughs> that was one of the funniest things I ever heard in my life at the time. So he had a way of taking a very serious topic and, uh, and, and making, it, making it funny. I can't do the same thing because I'm not a comedian. I have some comedic elements in my, in my psyche. But I don't think this is a very funny topic. I'll be right back to see what you think right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Right now, the world is going through an epidemic of hatred and violence not seen since Hitler uh, espoused the uh, evils of National Socialism and it is coming primarily from the Muslim world with hatred we've not seen since Hitler where entire villages are uh, decimated they can justify kidnapping children raping children as young as eight years of age killing boys who play soccer killing boys who fly pigeons and so I say look we in America have have the right to stop this hatred from seeping into this nation and we have to talk about expunging violence from the Quran. But immediately, as the words leave my lips, I know people are going to say, but what about violence that we see in the Old Testament? 
That's another issue that has to be dealt with, and I've talked about it. Whoever changed this Islamic religion, then kill him, close quote. Bukhari 8457, those are the words of Muhammad. Just kill anybody who uh, leaves the Islamic religion. That's really nice to teach, right? Quran 8.12, I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. Smite ye above their necks and smite all their fingertips off them. Well, one of them took it literally in Boston. Last night he tried to kill a cop with a big knife. Luckily for us, the cop blew his stupid brains out and sent him to the virgins in heaven that were waiting for him. What a religion. I don't understand that part of it. I just arrested 101 men for wanting to have sex with children under the age of 14 or, or 15. How do you have a religion that teaches men that when they die, they get 72 virgins? How in the world do you teach that? Now, what is that teaching them? That that's okay? I ask the question. I can't answer it. I can't answer the question. I can only ask it. So violence in the holy books is the issue. Violence in Islam in particular. Violence, 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 hatred, murder. We can't tolerate it anymore. It's a disease. So let's take some of the callers. James on FNC Radio, fire away. What do you think? Uh, well, Dr. Savage, I, I uh, agree with 99.9% .9 of the things that you say, and I'm not so sure I don't agree with the theory of what you're thinking here, but I think it needs some editing, because in a free society, you can't just determine what you think is violence and let that go across I, uh, well uh, yeah but there i understand that but i think anyone on earth can understand when it says that if a man lie with another man it's abomination they shall be stoned to death there's nothing ambiguous about that any more than there's anything ambiguous about saying if a woman committeth adultery she shall be stoned to death and blood shall be upon your hands how ambiguous is that my friend yeah well it's not ambiguous but see but there's not a specific plan it doesn't say that okay we'll meet on the bus this day to stone people on a regular basis and everybody show up with this many uh, rocks of this many weight, and here's the pamphlets on how we're going to do it. That <laughs> would take oh, off. Well, that, that, that's true. That would be political if they gave you a, a, a plan for that. They tried, this, they tried this in court before. They tried it with Hugh Hefner. They tried it with uh, heavy metal. They tried it with uh, 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 the ghetto rappers. And because the stuff in there was, you know, shoot cops. It's the same thing. And even if you did this, it would only be banning it in America, not the rest of the world. But the fact right, right. I'm only focused on banning violence in, in uh, holy books in America. I, I can't, I can't even think about the rest of the world. But we are supposed to be a light unto the nations. Unfortunately, we have a man who's put the, they try to put the light out. I understand that. But we, the nation, are still burning with pride, irrespective of this, this, this creature in the White House who has tried to dim the light of this nation. But put him aside for the minute. He has nothing to do with this. He's not God Almighty. He's just a community organizer who never should have been made into the president. The fact is that we, the people, have a nation that has existed long before this character was foisted upon us, that will be here long after this character is gone from the White House, and we have to talk about what kind of nation we want to live in. So I'm saying, where are they getting these ideas from? Well, the Jews don't kill homosexuals. The Jews don't kill adulterers. The Jews don't kill astrologers. But Muslims do in these third world hellholes. Well, there's some Jews that do, and there's some Christians that do, and there's some... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, show me one example of a Jew who kills a homosexual. Where? Well, I'm just saying that different people have their own individual ideas. Yeah, I understand, but they understand that that's not a literal commandment to go kill gays. I don't know of any Jews who've done that in this, in this world. Well, I, I don't either, but I'm just using that as an example. And the thing about it... Do you know that when a Muslim turns away from their religion, they can stone that person to death? And they do so, even in this country? Remember Simon Rush? Do you know that there are Muslims who kill their own daughters for not dating Muslim men? Are you aware that's going on in this country? Yes, I do. Yes. Well, what kind of nation permits this to go on? What kind of nation brings in this kind of hatred? I, I, the hatred, you, you, can't, you can't, I think, censor hatred. You can put them in jail for the rest of their life. Or you can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. After their fourteen-year-old daughter has been stoned to death in, in Michigan, then you could put him in jail, or he mutilates her body. Now, I think that we as a nation have an obligation, never mind the right, to discuss these things. I'm almost out of time. This is a topic that can go on for days, and it will, because no one's ever suggested it in the history of talk radio. I broke new ground because God spoke to you through me today. 
Stay on the line. I want to send you the book that triggered it all. The book that triggered it all in a hotel lobby in Mississippi. Countdown to Mecca. The title alone scared Muslims, I am told. And I said I'm more frightened of their Quran than of my novel, which calls for the opposite of what the title allegedly says. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Now, what would the world be like without religion? It would be a world of emptiness, a world of soulless individuals like Bill Maher, Stephen Colbert, John Stewart, Barack Obama. A world of emptiness, a world that is vacuous of soul. So please don't confuse me with the government jesters and the socialists who hate religion and copy the Marxian dictate that religion is the opiate of the masses. I would argue that uh, worship of the state is a greater, is a greater opiate uh, than is religion because the worship of the state is worse, far worse than worshiping God in terms of the crimes that have been committed against humanity by uh, such worshipers of the state. But I'm talking about the problem we have right now with Muslims in America who are being brought in, many of whom are illiterate, except for a single book. They read nothing, they can't read, they're illiterate in English. They can read the holy book, which is about it, and they read it and read it and read it and read it, it's drummed into them. They come here, they look around, they see people not like themselves and they hate you. Don't fool yourself. I keep hearing from Obama that we hate them. Have you looked in the eyes of the new visitors that he's bringing in? Have you looked in their eyes and seen love coming out of the eyes? Have you looked at the women in those burkas and seen love emanating from behind the slits? Well, let me know if you do. Send me a postcard about it. What are they being taught that they hate you so much? And if they hate the country so much, why are they coming here? They're coming here for the Benjamins, for the free welfare, for the free housing, for the free medical. They're coming here to spit on this country. But they're not alone. And so we as a people have an obligation to protect ourselves from such hatred. And one of the things we have to talk about is murder that is being taught to uh, individuals through their holy books, whether it be the Quran or the Old Testament. And that's what we're talking about. It's that simple. It's a tough topic, a topic that your mother told you never to talk about, a topic that people in talk radio generally wouldn't talk about. It's easy to talk about Ronald Reagan and the Founding Fathers day in and day out. Go ahead. Be my guest. But I think it's also important to talk about more universal topics uh, than just politics. I'm, I myself am fed up with politics. And I think there's nothing more political, by the way, than religion, incidentally. And religion is behind most of politics in specifics. So murder is the issue. Murder in the Quran, murder in the Bible. The act of murder happens to be rampant in the Bible. There are laws that tell people to be killed for, for absurd reasons. You're gay, killed. Curse your parents, you're killed. Not being a virgin on your wedding night, killed. Work on the Sabbath, killed. Make fun of bald people, killed. I could see that one. Killing of a man who tried to keep the ark of God from falling during transport, kill him. It's crazy. Just crazy. What kind of nonsense is this? Kill people who don't listen to priests. Kill witches. You should not let a sorceress live, Exodus twenty two seventeen. We know the kill homosexual thing. Kill fortune tellers, Leviticus twenty twenty seven. Whoever strikes his father or mother shall be put to death, Exodus twenty one fifteen. Death for cursing parents. If one curses his father or mother, his lamp will go out at the coming of, coming of darkness. All who curse their father or mother must be put to death. They are guilty of a capital offense. Death for adultery. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, both the man and the woman must be put to death. Leviticus 20.10. Death for fornication. Death to followers of other religions. You go down the list, I mean, it's insanity. Onanism. You know what onanism is? Do you know that that's an old, it's an antiquated phrase? Most of you never heard of the word onanism. Onan was a a figure in the Old Testament who actually cast a seat upon the ground. I'll leave it at that without getting graphic. I'm not uh, 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 one of the sick comedians who has to be dirty and graphic to make my point. I can make my point. Onan was a man who cast a seat upon the ground. It was considered such a crime to God to cast, for a man to cast a seat upon the ground that God struck the entire village that Onan lived in and killed everybody. That's all. One guy read a playboy and everyone died. Great. Yeah, that, how's that for justice? So a lot of this has to be looked at in historic terms, in cultural terms, in literary terms, but most especially in religious terms. And that's what talk radio is at its best, which is talk, discuss, uh, converse. You know what the word conversation means? It means with verse. So let's share some verse together and discuss this topic. 
I have such great callers. I think this is going to go on for days right now. I know it will. Because I know many of you are thinking people. And you like the fact that new ground has been broken today on the Savage Nation. And it's giving new hope to you that there is some intelligent life out there. KKOH and Reno. Uh, Lino. Lino and Reno. Lino and Reno. You're on the Savage Nation. Lino, what's on your mind? Lino. I guess he's gone with the wind. Oh, I hate those kind of calls. You're talking about anger. You should smote a caller who was not there when you pressed the button. I want God to put that into the new, the new edition. Any caller who is not there when I press the button shall be smote. What is the wrong button? I hit the wrong button? Okay, I'll hit the right button. Oh, Line six. Yeah. Go ahead. Make your point, please. I hit the wrong button. Oh, okay. Michael, that's one of the few times I disagree with you in your assessment of the uh, holy books, especially the uh, uh, Torah and the half Torah. And that is, uh, you know, when the Israelites were coming into, uh, you know, coming into uh, the Exodus, the religious practices that made the Israelites unique had fallen into despotude, and had to, and and they had picked up the uh, moral practices of the Egyptians, and they had to be purged. And in those days, the only way to do that was to use this means. That's the context. Well, I, I would say that we're worse off today than, than the Jews were when they entered Egypt. Well, that, that's true, but... He, I mean, this country's not sicker than any nation in the history of the world? Well, Are you telling me America is not sicker today than any nation that's ever existed? It's morally bankrupt because of the president. You know, a president's supposed to lead a nation, supposed to give it some moral guidance, but because he is an overt atheist, I don't believe he's a Muslim, by the way. I believe he was raised as a Muslim, but the man is a diehard atheist, communist, Marxist. He could care less about religion. He is exactly what a Marxist is. To him, religion is the open of the masses. He thinks he's God. So why would he believe in religion? Nevertheless, yes, the nation is dying because there's no moral leadership. I agree with you. Well, to, pur to purge out these moral habits, it was required. They were so strong that they had to be purged out. It could only be purged out in this way, in this context. And, you mean and, so, they, they, wait, so they killed fortune tellers? Well, it had to, because and there was an... Why, why would they kill someone who, who mocked a bald man? I, I, some of it's stupid. These things taken together formed moral habits that were so strong. In other words, someone was bald and you mocked them, they killed him. Okay, that made sense. That they didn't, it wasn't just mocking them, that was the issue. It was, the issue was uncleanliness. And, and, and it is remarkable that God, the object of it is this. And, and for instance, in Leviticus here... In, Death for uh, blasphemy, <laughs> kill false prophets. Infidels and gays should die, they say. Well, the kill anyone who approaches the tabernacle, number 148. Kill people for working on the Sabbath, Exodus 31, 12. Oh, so what you're saying is in order to bring, back, bring the people back to religion, you've got to kill those who wouldn't go along with the program. The along, the, along the lines of Jim Jones, and you give him the Kool-Aid, in other words. Not quite. The object being, and here, and to quote uh, the second cha uh, second verse of the ninth of nineteenth chapter in Leviticus, it, he says, "Be ye holy, because I, the Lord, uh, am your God, I, and I am holy. Be ye holy, as I am holy." And it's remarkable how many times God says says this. In other words, this was the only way to eliminate strong moral habits uh, to make those people holy, to conform them to to God who was creating. So, so do you think that that should be done in America today, start killing everyone who's not religious? No, we've gone beyond that time, and by the time we merged to the time of Jesus Christ, it, the uh, thing that you didn't really need to kill anybody to get your point across. It was just a simple matter of excommunicating somebody or telling them that they weren't going to receive the sacraments until the end of their life. That was sufficient to deal with the problem. But in the time that we're speaking of, this was sufficient to deal with this problem in order to basically create a condition in which we have a holy people dedicated to God. Okay, I can see your point of view from an historical point of view, but I'm talking about it from a political point of view. Obama is flooding America with Muslims, many of whom are illiterate in any language, including their own language. They believe in the sufficiency of a single book called the Quran. They read it as though it is the only book ever written, and they hate everybody else. Now, can we survive as a nation with that kind of book being brought into this nation? That book is a mixture of all kinds of different... Uh, uh, right. I understand it was taken from the Old Testament. It was taken from the teachings of Jesus, and it had some, uh, some, uh, some original, uh, original aspects as well. I understand all of that, but I'm asking a question about violence in these holy books is the issue. 
Well, the violence is uh, is not intended to be an end in itself in the Old Testament, whereas in the Quran it is intended to be an end in of itself. That is the distinction between the two books. The one Dude, uh, that's well put. That is well put. Yes, that is well put. Are you are you a religious scholar? Well, I'm a traditional, uh, devout Roman Catholic. I uh, practice I practice the old faith as you knew it uh, before Vatican II. Then I don't think you're a big fan of the new pope. I'm not. I'm I'm yeah. completely opposed to him. I I was declaring his his uh, heresies uh, long before anybody else did. And yeah, I'm, I, are you as convinced as I am that this man was planted in the papacy because he is a stone-hearted Marxist? Yeah, there's evidence to that. There's evidence to suggest that there was some funny business with regard to with, with regard to uh, Pope Benedict, but we're not going to go into that. But no, no, it's a separate question. But he's coming here to give his pro, pro, uh, pontifications, the pontiff is, on global warming, which is one of the most ludic ludicrous things I've ever heard of. But I don't want to get off the track here and go into theocracy as it merges with ecology. I think that you've made a very lucid point, and I, I like the way you presented your argument in an unemotional manner and how you stuck to your argument despite my attempts to throw <laughs> to throw you off base with my sarcasms you didn't go for you didn't take the bait my friend you're pretty good thank you no you're very good you're very good at what you do you must be a great teacher thank you michael well i mean it i i know the difference between one type of teacher and another can i send you my book countdown to mecca uh, i will do so on the only under one condition is that you not read it in public in any hotel in reno for fear that you may offend someone who sees the title. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on the line. We'll get a copy out to you shortly. Well, this is a very serious topic. I mean, it's, uh, I don't think anybody, I didn't intend to do this. I didn't wake up today and say, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to talk about violence in the holy books. I didn't think of that, but it came up because I'm a free thinker in a free country, in a free time, in a free land. And as a result, it's led to some vigorous conversation that I think is long overdue. And frankly, I've learned something from this conversation thus far. And I don't think it's the last time we're going to, to touch on this. I would only ask the following. I would appeal to my religious Jewish listeners, if there are any. I don't know if there really are any. I hear many of them like me and they listen, but I don't really think that that's true. There may be one or five or ten. I hear I have a monster audience amongst a certain sect of Judaism, the Chabad people, but I never hear from them. I don't know if they really listen. I would hope that you're open-minded enough to have heard this discussion thus far and not say I'm never listening to Michael Savage again because he has committed blasphemy. For if you were to do that, then you're confirming everything I just said that is wrong with the Bible. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the uh, Savage Nation, and what a day it's been. This is amazing. You know, I've been sick for a week and a half. I've had limited energy, and today is the uh, first show I've had in over a week where I was able to do the whole show with all my energy. And I stumbled upon this idea today. I didn't just, I didn't plan it. Luckily, I'm well-read in the Old Testament, the New Testament, and some other religions, so I, I can handle it somewhat. I don't claim to be a theologian, but theology is a very important part of politics, as you well know. It's the basis of all politics, incidentally. And I have no better evidence for that than to say that Marxism was built upon the rejection of all religion. Remember that. Never forget that Marxism was developed by an atheist, Karl Marx, who hated the religion of his own people, Christianity in Russia. And he said, religion is the opiate of the masses. On the face of it, all right, you get a bunch of poor peasants and you promise them bread in the next life and you promise them uh, rain for their crops and if they do good, they'll get this and that. But they're not going to get it in this life. They're going to get it in the next life. So they continue to suffer in this life, hoping that they'll get rewarded in the next life. So Karl Marx said, that's a bunch of garbage. I want to revise my nation of Russia. So I want to throw out all the religion. I want to create a new belief system, a belief in the state, a belief in government, a belief in centralized government. And that's what communism was. It's as simple as that. You probably never heard a simple an explanation 
for what this is all about than just now. That's because I'm a former science teacher who had to learn. I had a gift for taking very complicated ideas and reducing them to simple terms for children. And I myself am a child in some fields of thought, so I have to reduce these ideas to simple ideas so I can understand them, and I, I have the ability to translate it to you. Okay, so Marxism was a philosophy, an economic philosophy, built upon the hatred of religion, the destruction of religion, and replacing religion or God with the state. We understand where that led. It led to 60 to 80 million deaths in the last century. Everybody knows that on the planet except Barack Obama and the sorority girls. Left-wing governments have been thrown out of, all, out of office across the entire Western Hemisphere, whether it be England had the last election. Wherever you look, and nowhere in America except in America do you see the left-wing thriving. But that's a topic for another day. So then uh, we come to the next issue of politics, religion and politics. I have wondered why it is that the Christian religion has produced generations of individuals in Western Europe and in America that have produced so many wonders for the world, have given so many advancements to humanity. I can name the fields, I can name the inventions, and I claim it's all based upon the religion of Christianity that enabled them to do it. Or if you wish, you could look at all the Nobel Prize winners who happen to be Jewish. You would say it has something to do with the enlightenment of the religion itself that has freed the minds of men to enable them to create. You could look at it that way. And then you ask yourself, why is it that so many hundreds of millions of people live under the oppression of religions which imprison them, turn them into virtual slaves, where their free thinking is not only not encouraged, it is punished by death. And then you'll understand why the world is in such hell. And then you'll ask yourself, why would a government permit the importation of individuals with such retrograde thinking and a holy book filled with such hatred. Just food for thought, something to ponder. <laughs>